So weightlifters, perfect teachers for sprinters, absolutely perfect teachers for sprinters, because let's talk about relaxation of what's needed in sprinting. We need to stay relaxed for sprinting. We need to be able to generate power. We need to be able to make sure that the tightness, the relaxation is there so the tightness doesn't set in into the arms and shoulders because we know the arms, tightness in the arms and shoulders and jaw will, t will slow us down. It sucks the power out of us. Now let's imagine if that happened to a weightlifter. They would not be able to lift the weight they could and they'd make themselves injured. And we look at the stages of each of the lifts, whether it's a clean and jerk or the snatch. We look at what the, the technique used. They need to have a certain level of relaxation, or let's say more accurately, the absence of tightness for them to lift the weight they do. Because if they did, let's say for the clean and jerk, let's say they wouldn't be able to, to if their arms were tight and they had tightness in their upper shoulders, they had tightness in their arms and then a tightness in the jaw, they would not be able to get that weight even off the ground. They wouldn't be able to, if they had tightness in the, in the shoulders and jaw, to generate the power in the hips to do it in the second pull. So the second pull, that's the bit just after when it passes the knees, that whip action with the hips. They wouldn't be able to generate that power if they were tight in the shoulders and the jaw. So they need to be loose, have that looseness in the arms and the jaw to generate that whip action in the hips, to generate, to make sure to focus the power in the hips because the looseness in the shoulders and the jaw focuses the power in the hips and it focuses it in that area because that's whether we like it or not, that's for weightlifters, for both the clean and jerk and for the snatch, that's where most of the effort's coming through in the hips. So if the looseness wasn't there, if the relaxation wasn't there or the absence of tightness wasn't there, then they wouldn't be able to generate that second pull whip action in the hips. Secondly, they wouldn't be able, if the relaxation was there, we wouldn't be able to get underneath the bar, to react to the bar and get underneath the bar and stabilize if the relaxation wasn't there. And it's specifically in the clean and jerk as well, they wouldn't be able to get underneath the bar for the clean and jerk because it's not just, when you're weightlifters, they're not just in the jerk position where they're lifting the bar above their head. They're not really lifting the bar above their head, they're getting underneath the bar. They're preparing themselves to stabilize, to get underneath the bar so they can actually stand up. So each of the phases, if there was tightness in the upper, in the shoulders, in the jaw, for any, if, at any time during the lift, then weightlifters would either get injured or they wouldn't be able to lift the weight they do. They are kind of perfect teachers for sprinters. They're perfect teachers for sprinters as well because of the actual practice they go through in their training is repetitive, but they make sure they get their technique down. And that kind of concentration they have, the be in the here and now, because it also would, it is something that's very similar to sprinting as well, is the fact that weightlifters, they have a couple of seconds, they have one lift to get it right. And same as sprinting, you, in sprinting there's a lot of sprinters, even 100 meters, 60 meters, there's no chance of really making a mistake in it. You have to nail it. You have to nail it in that time. And it's one of those, it's a mental approach that you must have to bring relaxation into it, to bring that focus into it. And the weightlifters are experts in it because if they see some competitor lift more weight than them, they've got to shut that out and actually get on with their own lift and make sure the focus is on making sure the negativity and anxiety is down, the stress levels are down, and they're actually in the perfect moment to lift the weight, to get to shut out all outside factors. They've got one lift to get it right. Oh, well, three. Okay, they've got three to do it, but generally they have to, they, they've got to nail it. They have to nail it in that lift and it's a few seconds to do it and they can't have lack of, they can't make mistakes specifically because they go, a lot of the time they're going for their PBs and the biggest lifts of the time, it, 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 the biggest lifts they've ever done. That's what competition does. So weightlifters, I think, so obviously for sprinting, weightlifting, the clean and jerk or the clean, the power clean, mostly the full clean, but also the, the snatch, these are perfect lifts, not just, but not for the, the muscular aspect of it, the, so much the power aspect, it's the focus, the mental focus of getting the firing sequence right, because weightlifting is a perfect example of getting the firing sequence right. The best lifters have the firing, the hips firing first. There's no, they, they, they generally keep the, 
the lack of tightness in the upper upper shoulders and the jaw they keep that so they focus the the, the effort on their their hip muscles so what that is they are kind of the epitome the great example of perfect kind of firing sequence which is very similar to sprinting and that's why sprinters should do weightlifting because they need to and do it well do it well with less weight but making sure the looseness in the shoulders is there making sure they're getting the whip action in the the the, the hips because specifically in the second pool area is because it's it generates the right firing sequence for sprinting it gets the the hips muscles firing for firing first and then the arms follow so that's why weightlifting is such a great teacher watching the weightlifters the great weightlifters do it is a is a great teaching lesson for for sprinters the mental approach to it and the looseness and or general lack of tightness in the shoulders in the jaw when they lift they're generally now when we're looking at they they let's let's go back to this you'll see a lot of a little bit of tightness in the shoulders shoulders and jaw for a lot of the weightlifters if you look at it but compared to what they have to lift that that's that's understandable because they're lifting weight that they've i they're nearly ne next to their peak in general force but you notice that they they've got to keep the sh the tightness in the shoulders really loose to get that whip action there there's the absence of tightness there comparatively speaking for them to actually generate the hip action so watch the weightlifters the best weightlifters and if you're a sprinter obviously you you're, you might be doing um a, a weightlifting in, in the gym but get to know how to do it properly get to know learn the basics even with a light weight even the lightest weight is far better than try lifting lifting a heavy weight with bad technique that's that doesn't help you you've got to be able to lift in weightlifting do the weight perfectly where you've got the hips doing the, the, the driving sequence and doing most of the work and you've got looseness in the upper body. It's great learning mechanism to actually, a mental approach is the same, it's very similar to sprinting. So, so watch the great weightlifters, go back and watch the Olympics, go watch the, how they do it and practice it in the gym, even with a light weight. It doesn't have to be a heavy weight, but make sure the technique's there when you've, the, 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 the hips are moving first. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.